In this video, we are going to talk about a very important idea that we're going to use in the rest of the section. And this idea is the idea of unit vectors. So a unit vector is basically a vector that has a magnitude of 1. So a, a vector pointing in any direction, but the length of the arrow is 1. And that's a unit vector. And so oftentimes we'll use u to denote a unit vector. It doesn't have to denote a unit vector, but within context, oftentimes we'll use u to denote the unit vector. And um, here's just a couple obvious examples of some unit vectors. Uh, 1, comma 0. And so this would just be the vector that, the horizontal vector that goes uh, from the origin out to 1. And that would have a, obviously have a length of 1. You could also use the the magnitude formula here, you'd have 1 squared plus 0 squared, and that would just give you the square root of 1, which is just 1. So that's obviously a unit vector. And so would um, 0, 1. That would be a unit vector. The horizontal one going from the origin up to 1 on the y-axis, and negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Those are all unit vectors. Okay, but also this would be a unit vector over here. So this is negative square root of 2 and uh, negative square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. And of course we recognize that as a special point on the unit circle. It would be the um, 3 pi over 4 angle, right? And um, of course the vector going from the origin out to that point on the unit circle would have a length of 1 because that's the radius of the unit circle which we know is 1 um, and so we can actually use the formula here to actually show this um, this would be negative square root of 2 over 2 squared plus um, square root of 2 over 2 squared and this uh, would equal um, uh, this would be um, uh, 2 fourths, right? And this would be 2 fourths. And of course, those add together to be 1, and that's just equal to 1. Of course, that would be a unit vector. And the other thing then is any point on the unit circle is a unit vector, right? any point if you go from the origin out there that vector would have a radius of one and we are going to use that in one of the next videos uh, that's a very very useful fact that's uh, really really nice it's going to be very helpful and we're going to see that in in uh, one of the future videos here um, so now if we're given any vector, we can actually we can always find the unit vector that's headed in the same direction. And um, basically, the way that you would do that here is, um, let's say I'm given vector v1, v2. So what I can do is I can find the magnitude of this vector and then what I can do is I can scale it down. So what I've done here is I've, I've, I've shown you a diagram to give you, uh, uh, to kind of help you understand what's happening here. So um, suppose that this vector v, this long vector, has a magnitude of 3. Okay? So if I multiplied v by 1 third, what that actually does is scales it down so it's 1 third the length of v. Well, if v is 3, then 1 third of that length would be uh, 1, right? So the magnitude of u here, which is 1 third v, would be a unit vector. It would have a magnitude of 1. And that's what's going on here. You're basically taking, this here is the magnitude of V, so I'm taking 1 over the magnitude of V as a scalar, and I'm multiplying it by the vector V1, V2, which would basically give me V1 over the magnitude um, and V2 over the magnitude. And this would be a unit vector. 
So let's do a couple examples here. So I have this vector, negative 3, 4, and I kind of chose that. Uh, it's kind of a special example because when I take the magnitude here, I'm going to get negative 3 squared plus 4 squared, and that actually is 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. And so this one actually has a magnitude that is not a radical. Um, and so what I can do here then is find the unit vector. Um, so the unit vector for this one would be 1 fifth um, V, which is negative 3, 4. And so this would give me negative 3 fifths and 4 fifths. And this would be a unit vector and you, we could see that. I'll take the magnitude here. This would give me, uh, I'd have the square root of negative 3 fifths squared plus 4 fifths squared and this would equal, um, this would be uh, 9 over 25 plus 16 over 25 which would give me square root of 25 over 25 which is the square root of 1 so that's equal to 1 okay and so but basically any vector can be scaled down now they usually don't work out this nice so let me just give give you some random vector let's say v was equal to um, 7 comma um, uh, we'll say 7 comma negative 2 okay but you can still do this um, so the magnitude of V is going to be the square root of 7 squared plus negative 2 squared which is 49 plus 4 and that's the square root of 53 and so the unit vector headed in the same direction is V would just be um, 1 over the square root of 53 times 7 negative 2 and this would give me 7 over the square root of 53 and negative 2 over the square root of 53 and of course if you wanted to you could rationalize the denominator you don't have to this would be the um, this would be the unit vector and then you could actually calculate u let's go ahead and do that here or the magnitude of u so the square root of 7 over 50 square root of 53 squared plus negative 2 over the square root of 53 squared and that would just equal the square root of 49 over 53 plus 4 over 53 which would give you the square root of 53 over 53 and that's just equal to 1 okay so you can see how that works you can always scale it down usually it'll be more like the second example where you um, get a radical uh, there's only a few vectors uh, well, there's an inf I shouldn't say a few, there's an infinite number <laughs> of vectors that'll do this. Those are the Pythagorean triples, actually. The right triangles where all three sides are whole numbers. And they do exist. There's an infinite number out there, I think. Um, but uh, usually any random vector, you're going to have a radical like that. Right? So maybe let me give you one to try here. So let's just say V is equal to, um, uh, we'll say, um, I mean, it doesn't matter, uh, negative 4, uh, 5, we'll say, something like that. So go ahead, you can pause the video if you want, and see if you can find the unit vector going in the same direction and then start the video back up, see how you did. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what the unit vector is going in the same direction. So I'm going to take the magnitude of V.
So this would be negative 4 squared plus 5 squared. And this would be square root of 16 plus 25. And that would be 30, 41. Square root of 41. And so now my unit vector going in the same direction would be um, uh, 1 over the square root of 41 times negative 4, 5. And that would just give me negative 4 over the square root of 41, 5 over the square root of 41. And I'll just leave it like that. So that's the idea. Unit vectors have a magnitude of 1. And any vector, given any vector, you can scale it down so that you get a unit vector that's headed in the same direction as the given vector. And what you're going to see later on is um, we're going to be able to find unit vectors very, very easily because of this fact that all these points on the unit circle are unit vectors. And what we're going to do is scale them out. And so when we're given the direction and the magnitude of a vector, you can very easily get the component form of the vector headed in that direction, which is a very, very nice thing because as we saw, adding two vectors to find the resolvent vector, it's very easy when they're in component form. There's no law of cosines, law of sines. And so in this section, we're going to find a much, much easier way to do those applications. So, okay, but before we do that, we're going to talk about uh, two vectors, the I vector and the J vector, and just show you a little bit with that because that's one of the things that they discuss in the, this unit. It's one of the things that you're going to see on the homework.